Hello, and welcome to Chapter by Chapter, Eye of the World. I am your host, Will Cowan, and with me, like always, the magnificent, the mystical, the magnificent, <laughs> Mr. Steve Thank Haynes. That's, I mean, two magnificence is warranted. Thank you. <laughs> it's good. I, I know you don't give a shit about hyping me up, but I'm here to lift you up. You're the wind. Well, I was about to, but <laughs> I'm anymore. the wind underneath your wings, lifting you. And I'm Barbara Streisand. <laughs> and today we are talking about Chapter Eight of The Eye of the World, a place of safety. Yes. So, uh. If you remember from the chapter that we left off yesterday, if you guys are reading along with us, if you're not reading along with us, that's okay too. But if you are reading along with us, chapter leaves off last time with uh, Rand taking Moraine to Tam to see if Moraine can help at all with healing him. Uh, Before we really dive in here, I want to make an amendum. Is that the way? Is that how you say amendum? Amend you? Amend um, And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and make an amendum too because I just said it Barbara Streisand. But that's so silly of me because what I meant to say is Bette Midler. <laughs> I can't believe that I, that I did Look, that. Look, we're going to be making amendums quite a bit now. We're not experts. Addendum? Addendum. Oh. Abend- we got to make an addendum for our addendums. Uh, All right. Go ahead with your addendum. So last chapter I said uh, Moraine mentioned that she saw the raven in chapter two. Uh, I said that she saw the, uh, she mentions that she saw the raven and took it as a sign for the attack in chapter seven. Uh, That doesn't happen here. Or that doesn't happen there. That happens in this chapter. Way to go, Will. I messed it up. I messed it up. I got, I I went too far ahead and I apologize to our listeners and all our fans and particularly my family members. Good. Anyways, yes, so let's get into it now. Now that we got all that serious stuff out of the way, Bette Midler, <laughs> Barbara Streisand stuff out of the way. We had to clear it up. Yeah, uh, let's get into it. So Tam takes, or uh, Rand takes Moraine and Lan uh, to where Tam is at the Wine Spring Inn where he's just resting at the moment. Um, out on the way there, Lan... I think he sees the Gleeman, Tom. Yeah. And uh he mentions he mentions kind of like offhandedly to to uh Rand that he doesn't like him. He's like, that Gleeman was nowhere to be found during the battle. And Rand kind of like brushes it off as like there was a battle. Like he's yeah. just a Gleeman. Yeah, exactly. Just relax. He's like, I don't know what you expected from that guy. You wanna sing some songs? Look, he juggles. That's what he does. That's he's what he's a juggler. good at. <laughs> what are you expecting him to do? Juggle them? Juggle at them? No. But Lan, Lan never met, nevertheless kind of mentions that he doesn't like it. And that's kind of like the first like mention of Lan like specifically calling somebody out like that. Lan doesn't seem like a very happy person, but he's like, I don't like that guy. Yeah, he hasn't really been saying a whole lot. He's just kind of been standing around with a sword. Yeah, but he does say that, which I think there's merit. In that. Yep. So uh Rand takes Tam or takes Moraine. Ugh. Rand, Tam, Blam, Brand, blah, blah. There's I'm surprised that I'm getting this much stuck in my head without messing it up. So yeah. just be prepared. That Between I'm gonna... Rand, Tam, Lan, Bran. There's a lot to mess up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. He takes Moraine up to Tam's rune and uh Moraine starts getting starts preparing herself to or him preparing Tam to for to heal. Heal, to heal. And to heal is kind of part of the is kind of part of the Aes Sedai ability. And everything that the Aes Sedai does kind of has to draw from this place called the one power, the true source. Um, yeah. So, so this is she's using the one power to heal Tam. Yeah, so what is the one power, Steve, if you want to dive into that glossary for us? All right, everyone, we'll get ready for this one, because this one is a doozy. The one power. 
the power drawn from the true source. The vast majority of people are completely unable to learn to channel the one power. A very small number can be taught to channel, and an even tinier number have the ability inborn. For these few there is no need to be taught. They will touch the true source and channel the power whether they want to or not, perhaps without even realizing what they are doing. This inborn ability usually manifests itself in late adolescence or early adulthood. If control is not taught, or self-learned, which is extremely difficult, with a success rate of only one in four, then death is certain. Since the time of madness, no man has been able to channel the power without eventually going completely, horribly mad. And then, even if he has learned some control, dying from a wasting sickness which causes a sufferer to rot alive, a sickness caused, as is the madness, by the Dark One's taint on Sidin. Sidin? For a woman, the death that comes with, without control of the power is less horrible. But it is a death just the same. Aes Sedai search for girls with the inborn ability as much to save their lives as to increase Aes Sedai numbers. And for men, with it, in order to stop the terrible things they inevitably do with the power in their madness. Whew. That, there's a lot to chew on there. There's, there's a lot to chew on. But it was meaty. It's it, the one power is that is a lot of where this the magic system of this world kind of revolves around. It's this true source one power thing. And yeah, exactly. So it, it's you know it's kind of like the force from Star Wars. Yep. Except it's kind of like that of the force could uh, you know turn you into a schizophrenic and cause you to die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I it's, guess it kind of can. It, I mean, in our Star Wars podcast, which we'll yeah, get yeah, into. Yeah, that's a different show. That's a different show. <laughs> yeah, so the one power, so the Aes Sedai, so, 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 so. There's so much to really dive in there. And I don't, I don't like, we. Get, there's a podcast in itself where we can just talk about the, the one power and how it works. Yeah. But I'm not even 100% sure how that one power works, even from that just glossary entry. But what we do know is that the Aes Sedai. that it has something to do with the Dark One's taint. <laughs> oh nah. um you got that all wrong <laughs> sorry what were you you were saying what we do know what we do know is that the Aes Sedai has to draw from this source to use their power and that's what she's doing right now to to heal tam so as she's preparing uh to heal tam she tells everybody to leave the room and Bran is about, I think, I think it was Bran that was in the room and he's like trying to ease Rand. He's trying to take Rand with him. Like, let's go, let's go. And Rand's like, no way. I'm staying here. That's my dad. Like, no way am I leaving. This is, I need to be here for this. Yeah. And Moraine's like. Sticking by his side. Yeah, exactly. And more, and Moraine's like, that's okay. But like, just stand in the corner with, uh, with Lan and just, just don't talk. You can talk, but not very loud. Just let me focus. Because what she's about to do takes takes a lot of effort. Look, I've never healed anybody with magic, but I can imagine you need a little bit of focus, more focus it's than I ever have. Yeah, it got it's probably pretty tricky, right? I would assume. So, Rand goes off in the corner with Lan. Everybody else leaves the room, and Moraine starts doing this chant thing, and she pulls out a little statue, uh, a statue called an Angrial. Should we get into the glossary, glossary of this guy? This is a pretty short glossary entry. Yeah, it's nowhere near as long as a, the one power. And um, <clears throat> it's uh, obviously connected. So let's take a look. The Angrial, a very rare object which allows anyone capable of channeling the one power to handle a greater amount of the power than would be safely possible unaided. Remnants of the Age of Legends. The means of their making is no longer known. Right. So it's like a power booster. Yeah, it's a little it's a it's a level up. It's a <laughs> it's Yeah, it's a, it's an upgrade. She pull she pulls it out and you get that Zelda sound. Do 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 do. Yeah, exactly. You know, Powered it's like up. the it's like the second that you get the 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 metal boots in Ocarina of Time and you're like, "Now I can walk underwater." 
Yeah, except it doesn't do that. It just boosts your power. It would be more like the thing that increases your mana gauge. So why don't you go play some more Zelda then, Will? Why don't you get your Zelda facts up to date? We'll get into this in our Zelda podcast. Completely different show. That's Triforce by Triforce. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Steve, you don't know what you've done. So uh, Lan and Rand are in the corner while Moraine is doing her magic. She's healing. And Lan looks at Rand and he notices the sword that he has on his on his waist. And he's like that is that is a nice sword. He's like that is damn. That's some <laughs> nice sword and it's pretty interesting that a farmhand like you would have that sword. Yeah. And Rand's just like kind of pushing him pushing the questions aside like he doesn't care, but Lan is mentioning it. He's like that sword is way too valuable for just Yeah, it's, he can't just keep anything. his eyes off it. And he like I think he even mentions where he's like there's a heron on the on the hilt, isn't there? Mm-hmm. and uh rand is like yeah but what does that matter and they kind of like leave it at that but it just kind of like goes the show which we talked about i think in chapter five when it dropped before the drolix first attack was that this sword means something yeah this is a sword that they said doesn't mean anything which yeah. means that it means everything oh everything is pointing at the sword saying it it's something yeah anyways yeah. that ca- that kind of wraps up that conversation um so after um Moraine heals Tam, he just kind of sleeps. And Moraine is very tired, but she talks a little bit about the Raven, the anendum that we made earlier, where she actually talks about the Raven at this point and talks a little bit more about the mirror drawl. And we we've covered the mirror drawl already in a uh, uh, a previous chapter. But Rand tells the story of him killing the the Trolloc in the house and Lance like good job. It's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, great job. The next the next thing that's like the biggest piece of information that we get from this chapter is Moraine mentions like the the attack strategy by uh the Trollocs. Like what what were they actually doing? And she's like, so they attacked and they kind of made it on they kind of did it on purpose to make it look like they were just kind of like looting or something like something like that, but there were three, like a raid, like a raid, yeah. But there were three main houses that they targeted. It was parents, Rand's house, Rand's house. It was parents' house, and it was his, and it was Matt's house. These three boys, and Moraine kind of mentions like they're looking for a boy with it. They're looking for a kid within this certain age range, and all three of those kids are within like weeks of each other of being born they're all the same uh same age which moraine kind of says like if they're looking for you then you must be the ones that i'm looking for as well the people exactly that the people that i that i need to help the part of this turning of the wheel which arguably it's a bit of a flawed logic we mean they want something to do with you so i guess i want something to do with you let's go well, the she, ones. Uh, she isn't it kind of mentioned in an earlier chapter where I think it was by. Yeah, I'm just giving her shit. OK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and she's like, OK, but she says to Rand, it's all three of you that they're looking for. So you. So there's something there's something of importance that you guys are to them. And I believe you guys are the same people that I was looking for as well. I don't know which one of you is their exact target. But it's all three of you, and you guys need to come with me to Tarvalon, like tonight, or like tomorrow morning yes. or something. Yeah, uh, that Tarvalon is that's that's their place of safety. Yeah, that's like the Aes Sedai, you know, uh, Coruscant, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, yeah, exactly. We'll stick with that, I guess. Yeah, now. maybe we'll talk about it. Um, in future episodes yeah I, yeah we'll we'll see how it how we get into it when we uh, if if we do end up getting to get there. um yep. yeah she says that you guys have to come with me to tarvalon and he's like i okay i guess so he doesn't really like argue with it and then lan and marine leave and then ran looks for bran and his wife um mistress alvira i can't remember her first name 
Um, um, yeah, we can call her mistress. Mistress Alvir. Bran Alvir and Mistress Alvir. And he, he asked them, like, what what were the places that were attacked? He was kind of confirming Moraine's story. Because, like, I, she, he wasn't quite sure himself. And it's not like yeah. he's going to go out and check the evidence himself. His dad is, like, healing right there. So he, he asked them. And they pretty much confirmed the story from Moraine. What, from what Moraine said. So he's like, okay. I think I got to go. Yep. And that pretty much wraps up this uh, this chapter. He goes to sleep, and that's it. That's the end and, of the chapter. And this chapter is when we officially learn that the black cloaked rider from the earlier chapters is a Mirdral. Mirdral. Yeah, 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 yeah. We already and we've already talked. We have already talked about that already because I read ahead. Sorry, yeah. folks, but the book's too Just good. Just summarizing, but uh, but yeah, so. I mean, that's what we got for this chapter. Yep. Yeah. It's, Thanks for listening today, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so chapter. much. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be taking a look at chapter nine, Tellings of the Wheel. The chapter tomorrow, Steve, I'm going to tell you right now, we got a lot to talk about tomorrow. There's we got a lot. lot. There's a lot going on in this chapter. Uh, yep. Thank you guys so much. We've been chapter by chapter, and we'll see all of you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow.